Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to another twin pregnancy update. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Angela. I am currently pregnant with twins. I already have four children, so this is quite the journey I am going on. Please go ahead and subscribe to my channel down below. I would love to have you and let's get into this update. So per usual, I am late. <laughs> Um, I'm combining 21, 22, and 23 weeks. I had a lot going on um, feeling-wise. Like, no, no, it wasn't feeling-wise. Uh, like, tiredness. So anytime that I would try to record, I would just be like, oh, I can't do this, I'm just too tired. So it is what it is. But I did write my notes on my phone as I always do so I am currently 24 weeks um, so next week is when I'll post 24 weeks but if you guys don't know I'm posting them a week behind just because I feel like I can't tell you what I'm going through that week because I haven't gone through it that week and it just makes more sense for me to do it this way so 21, 22, 23. We'll start with 21 weeks. 21 weeks, I know that my headaches um, kicked in like on overdrive. I was getting a headache like every day the week of my 21 weeks. I think I had it for six days straight. Like I would take medicine, um, Tylenol, and the headache would go away. Next day, have a headache take time and all headache would go away so things like that my heartburn also kicked in overdrive um, I finally got babe to get me some Tums and I had been using that because normally it's just at night that it um, hits me that's actually 22 weeks as well that was one of my symptoms and then lastly for 21 weeks just my cravings for anything crunchy had been on overdrive uh, a lot of carrots a lot of watermelon a lot of salad anything crunchy sometimes most of the time on the healthier side um, I did have like Cheetos I love that and um, Doritos but I try to stay away from those when I want to grab one I'll just grab a piece of watermelon instead um, yeah that was pretty much it for week 21 um week 22 so when i turned 22 weeks that same day i had this excruciating pain in my thighs i like couldn't even walk up not my thighs it was just the left side it was like i want to say the top part of my thigh i don't think that it was the back of my thigh but it went all the way down to my knee Sometimes it would go all the way down to my shin throughout that week, that pain, and I was told that that was actually sciatic nerve pain. So I know I had a, some sciatic nerve pain with Aaliyah and Alina actually, um, but it was mostly it started in my back. This time around it started in my leg. My back really wasn't hurting the first couple of days of 22 weeks. But once I got into like the middle of the week, then the pain in my lower back right above my booty started kicking in. So I was like, okay, yeah, this is definitely the sciatic nerve pain. Also for 22 weeks, I started getting out of breath really bad, like and really fast, like from walking from my room to the living room, I was out of breath. So something that I wrote down <laughs> for 22 weeks, which it's kind of funny, once we get to 24 weeks that I give you guys the update, um, because I did have a sonogram today. So the things that I thought in 22 weeks was not true <laughs> at all. But I wrote down that I could tell the difference between baby A and baby B's kicks. Um, I just was basing it on the position from my sonogram that I had previously, I think at 20 weeks, I guess. Um, but you guys will see just how wrong I was about that. Um, 
because of that, I thought that, you know, baby A was more on the mellow side and, you know, chill, relaxed, laid back, and baby B was like my spicy baby. You know, baby B was the one that was always moving and really hard kicks. Baby A's kicks were a little bit more on the gentle side. I was completely wrong. Keep that in mind. Stay tuned for 24 weeks update. During my 22 weeks, I started craving scents, which is totally new. I've heard of pregnant women craving scents, wanting the scent of like fabric softener or gasoline exhaust. I had that with my first pregnancy with Ariana with the whole exhaust gasoline type of thing. Um, but since having my last three, didn't go through that. So that week, I started craving the scent of mothballs, which is so random and so crazy because it's probably, again, not on the healthiest side. But I mean, I did make Babe go out and buy a bag of mothballs from Target. Um, so I do put like I put some in our bathroom so the bathroom smells like mothballs so I can just go into the bathroom and just like be like I'm salivating right now just thinking about it and then I also put some in the car which I don't even know why I put them in the car because I don't really go anywhere unless it's my appointment but I just made sure that I wasn't gonna take the bag and just like inhale the damn mothballs because again that's probably not the healthiest so i did that had the bag put away until you know i don't smell it anymore and that's that i just found it so weird that i just created the smell of mothballs it's like i never had a problem with the smell of mothballs but i just always thought like oh mothballs yeah it smell like old people <laughs> My grandma used to put mothballs in all the closets, so that's why I say it smells like old people. But here I am, an old person craving mothball smell. Um, the end of week 22 was um, a bit of a... I don't even know how to describe it. I just know that I just had this overwhelming... keep using that word. I just know that my anxiety definitely, it's not that it got the best of me, but I just can't anymore. So I'm in the process of searching for a new doctor. Um, I don't know if I explained this. I feel like I might have explained this in my first trimester video, but my the practice that I go to, um, I don't see the same doctor and that would be okay if I were to just meet all of the doctors and then I you know will notice them all by face when it's time for me to go into labor but that's also not the case so they have a bunch of doctors <clears throat> a bunch of residents because it's a teaching hospital but the thing is, is that when I go into labor none of those doctors that I have been seeing is going to deliver my babies so each time i'm getting more and more comfortable with you know different doctors or asking specific questions and then realizing once i get in the car like wait a minute it doesn't matter how many vaginal twin deliveries he's had he's not going to deliver my babies <laughs> like it doesn't matter so i just i can't grasp that everything going on you know that people are changing their or practices are changing their um, hours they're changing just a lot of stuff some people don't even want to take on new patients because of things going on so um, I'm in the process of that once it actually happens I will let you guys know I am looking into a practice that has three doctors only and they will be on call at a different hospital so i would have to deliver at a different hospital which i'm totally fine with um i got some reassurance from a friend and a friend of hers who actually works at the hospital so i'm okay with that just as long as i can be 
greeted by someone who I've seen before who I know especially since this is just such a new experience for me like I I'm gonna freak out I'm I already know myself I'm going to freak out because I'm already freaking out and it's not even time for me to give birth yet um it's just a scary thing especially you know you're looking online you're googling stuff and so many things can happen and go wrong or go right and I just want to know the person and have that faith and trust in them you know what I mean so that's what happened I still haven't been able to get into um anyone new so I still am going to the old one that's who I went to today and yeah now for 23 weeks which by far the busiest week uh 23 weeks i started nesting od nesting so that was pretty much when i got the majority of our apartment um unpacked which i think my next video will be a vlog that kind of gives you guys a life update so stay tuned for that but <clears throat> um i'm not done I'm still nesting but you know my feet don't want to let me nest in peace because they keep getting swollen and when I say I'm nesting I'm directing my nesting <laughs> Ariana has been helping me a ton um, we like cleaned out our storage room that we have here it, <clears throat> outside of our apartment she pretty much took everything out and put everything back in I got like old baby clothes together blankets anything gender neutral um anything that I think I might need or I can use I also had like a couple of things that I was supposed to be selling so I got that all done and washed um got the storage room reorganized and all that uh we reorganized uh, well I reorganized our closet um the kids room i had a shit ton of laundry to put away got that all done <clears throat> and like i said pretty much unpacked i also tried to things that we didn't use or just i just don't feel the need to have it out like we're not going to use it i wanted to keep packed up and we put it in our storage so hopefully I was over here thinking like I just did this big thing but then looking around the apartment I'm like damn we still have mad crap like there's so much stuff but then again we're gonna have six kids just imagine how much stuff we're really gonna have <laughs> um so talking about nesting my swollen feet so every day that week that I was directing and this is what I just don't understand like why are my feet getting swollen if I'm not really on my feet um, I was pretty much sitting down in a chair and saying, put this here, put this over there, take that down, put it over here. I mean, I did get up a couple of times and do a couple of things, but nothing like dramatic. I feel like I did more today than I did that day and my feet aren't swollen today. So I don't know, but I did have a swollen, swollen feet a lot this week. My restless, restless leg syndrome kicked in. I found that magnesium helps magnesium supplements I've been taking those um, I think they were 500 milligrams I have the bottle in my bathroom it's the CVS brand so any magnesium um, supplement my back hurts my neck hurts <laughs> um, any magnesium supplement can help or at least it did help for me but then I realized like uh, I could be taking too much magnesium so I kind of had to give it a rest I probably 23 weeks and five and six days I didn't take it so for the past two days nights I haven't taken it um, I had really bad migraines this week actually yesterday yeah yesterday I didn't take anything normally I have to take something but I didn't take anything I couldn't be on my phone I couldn't be in the lights my migraine was so bad it would not go away I had already taken Tylenol twice and the 500 milligram tablets I take um, the extra strength it didn't work finally at night I had to give in and take a 600 milligram ibuprofen 
ibuprofen, which is not recommended for you to take during pregnancy, mostly during your third trimester. Once you're 30 weeks and above, they don't want you to take it at all. Um, I was told by a doctor earlier in pregnancy because at the migraine I have migraines back in my first trimester and she had told me that as long as it's like not an everyday occurrence I would be fine and that was in my first trimester back when I was probably like 13 weeks 12 somewhere between t uh, 10 and 13 weeks so and I'm 20 I was 23 weeks six days yesterday so I had to take it and it did help me go to sleep I did wake up without a migraine but later on in the day I did get a migraine again so not sure what's going on with that I again I'm praying that it's not an underlying issue um, because it, it's just really intense and I'm not trying to take no more ibuprofen at all for the rest of this pregnancy so um, I have an appointment I have an appointment on Monday for something else though and then I have my regular follow-up um, on March no we're not in March we're in May <laughs> May 18th so I'm going to speak to them about the migraines because if the Tylenol is not working I need to be able to take something um, because when they are that intense I cannot do anything and obviously some days three days out of the week I am here with the kids by myself so I need to be able to take care of them um, so they're gonna have to push hopefully they'll be able to prescribe me something else more sh uh, stronger for migraines um, I am getting really dark spots in in different places so for me <clears throat> I don't even know if you can tell with my neck but in pregnancy um, all of my pregnancies I've always my neck gets darker than my body um, I can tell in person but I don't know if on camera you can tell the difference and a lot of times you know people's necks are are darker or lighter or whatever the case may be but mine mine definitely gets darker um, and my belly also it wasn't darker before I guess as it's stretching out more and more it's just getting darker and darker which also happened with Aaliyah Aaliyah and Elena so, um, I don't know about you guys, but I grab mirrors so that I can see places that I haven't been able to see in a while. And I realized that my JJ was getting darker. And I'm just like, what in the world? And I read up on it and it happens. <laughs> Your vagina can get darker as well. It says that after you give birth that it'll go back to its original its color but I was just kind of in shock <laughs> because that has never happened to me before um, honestly I haven't been this early in pregnancy where I couldn't see it anyway so that's why I know I would have noticed it but yeah never happened before but you know it is what it is you got to go with the flow um, and I also have extremely dry skin so along with all the places that are getting darker my skin and those darker places are getting extremely dry so that's been interesting to deal with um, thank goodness for aquaphor because that's what I have been using on my JJ <laughs> um, just to combat the dryness um, and I'm not talking about like the inside TMI, but like I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the outside, you know, what you can see, the visible parts of you. Um, it's not a big deal. We all have the same lady parts. Like, I don't know if you're going to be weirded out, but you know, whatever. It's a symptom. Just letting you know it can happen in case it happens to someone else. Don't freak out like I did because it can happen. Just get yourself some Aquaphor, lather that baby up and you're good to go. I mean, you can wear a pad if it bothers you, but I mean, 
you'll be completely fine. Uh, I'm completely fine. <laughs> and it's nice and soft. <laughs> oh goodness, yeah. So let's go ahead and wrap up this video. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys my belly because that is all the pre pregnancy symptoms that I've had for the past three weeks. Yeah, let me go ahead and show you guys my belly. Okay, so this is my belly from the front. Again, wearing black, you're not even gonna be able to see it. Here's the left side. And here is the right side. To my mama cup over here. So, with my belly, my shirt up I mean, here's my belly from the front. The light is kind of washing out the darkness of my belly. I mean, you can kind of see the shadow, but all of this right here is super dark. Super duper dark, but here's the front. Here is the left side. I do have like my needle sticks where I had to do my um, medication for my hyperemesis, my HG they are kind of fading away but i think it's because my belly is getting dark <laughs> um but yeah that's the right side there we go you can really see it and then here's my left side i don't know why it kind of looks smaller to me what do you guys think does it look smaller to you than like last week Maybe it's the way I'm facing. Oh, there we go. All right, so yeah, like I said, that's everything. Um, hopefully I can catch up with 24 weeks and post it on time. If not, I'm sorry. Sorry, I'm not sorry. <laughs> Just kidding, not really. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. I'm gonna show you.